10 years. That makes me the third oldest member on the board. And I'm proud to say that uh, probably one of the best decisions I made uh, to join this chamber. Um, been having a lot of fun since um, around a bunch of uh, great folks, super folks who became uh, basically family for, to me now. Um, and uh, we just uh, wel welcome everyone else and um, let's have fun tonight. And uh, to all of you, cheers. Cheers, Jeff. Let's see if Natasha is here. I see Mr. Boni, so I'm going to do Boni next. Am I now? Yeah, I have to introduce you. Ah, okay. Elve Boni, very happy to be here. I've been uh, on the board a few years. I don't think I can count. Uh, maybe six? Six, thank you. <laughs> six years. Um, uh, I have a, an accounting firm in North Miami Beach. It was mentioned our, the work that we're doing with the North Miami CRA. If we have the, there is a grant there for $5,000. It's called the Jumpstart Grant. So if we have members who are within the North Miami CRA limits they, and, and have been affected by COVID-19, they certainly should get with us. You should take advantage of this also. Otherwise, as Jeff said, very happy to have worked with a, a fine group of esteemed colleagues and looking forward to work with the membership. Thank you, Mr. Boni. Um, let's see who else we have. Mr. Monplaisir. He is our vice chair. He is the foundation vice chair. He has been with us, what, the past year? He is a co-chair of the Membership Text Task Force. He is a senior telephone consultant and managing partner for Caribbean Media. Mr. Monplaisir. Hi. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. It's always good to be amongst friends. I'm very pleased to be with everyone tonight. As, um, as uh, Lomala mentioned, I am, uh, I am the Vice Chair of the Hacker Foundation. Uh, which is a foundation that had been put in place about a year and a half ago. I've uh, been fortunate to be named as the co-chair of the foundation. And one of the things that we focus on is the work directly with the small businesses in the community by providing them with counseling on things as simple as taxes, marketing, corporate structure, and access to services uh, that the city offers. Uh, for the past year, we've uh, we spent a lot of our time working directly with members of the chamber, and uh, and with our board members uh, by providing them services uh, such as the financial services uh, and consulting services. Uh, the, for the past couple of months since the COVID nineteen started, uh, we I personally worked uh, along with uh, Madam Chair and Madam Vice Chair with the with Elder Boni, where we, I think, I would say maybe it was a total of 15 clients. That are, some of them are members of the chamber, some of them are, are not. That we work closely with to, to help them fill out the, their loan applications and, and, and help them a little bit structure better their business. So one of our goals uh, during this year is kind of like to see how do we work directly with the community to try to see how do we elevate them uh, to a different level so that we make the business community stronger uh, through the relationships that we have. Uh, very pleased to be with everyone tonight. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions, comments, or concerns that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montplaisir. Um, some board members. So, but Marilyn is here. Marilyn, so? Yes, this is me. Just hi. hi, hi everybody. How are you? Doing great, thank you. You're gonna be our speaker for the next event, Breakfast and Learn. So can you tell us a little bit about your event? Yes, yes, definitely. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Marilyn Russo. I'm a speaker, coach, uh, entrepreneur, and a bunch of other hats. But today we're gonna talk about um, you know, how to navigate through these tough times. And as a coach, uh, one of the works that I do is really help 
uh, my clients really, first of all, identify what's holding them back. And we all know there's a number of things that are really, ch we're challenged by. You know, here we are, we want to be healthy. We also want to provide for our families, our businesses have been impacted, our jobs. I mean, there's so much going on. So we asked ourselves, you know, how do we remain positive in this pandemic? And, uh, but, but it's possible. And that's the work that I do. And I'm looking forward with uh, coming on and doing a masterclass. I believe it's going to be on May 29th. I'm not sure. Yes. Um, perfect. Okay, good. So we'll be doing an online masterclass for business owners, individuals, anyone who's interested in learning uh, about tools, resources that they can use to help them get through these tough times and come out even stronger than before. Uh, so again, you know, it's a lot of it revolves around mindset and that's the area that I love to work on. So I'm really excited and look forward to having all of you. It's gonna be a great session. And there's going to be learning and lots of fun things happening. And I have a special surprise for all the attendees. So definitely, I look forward to having all of you. I look forward to having you. Thank but you. Thank you. Okay. So now we're going to open the mic to all of our members that wants to say something or have a question. Can I say something? Oh, okay. Madam Chair would like to speak. I would like to thank Dr. David for attending, Laura Dabdo for being there. She is one of our new members. She will present the law firm. You'll say a little bit about her. <laughs> and then um, Papali Kowade, our attorney, uh, Philip Almond, that's here, that's here. And then I welcome you and thank you. If you have anything to say, just raise your hands. And then Madam Vice Chair is available to assist you. Thank you. And then Chef, where is Chef Stefan? Who was here? And then Chef. I'm here, I'm here. Chef Ivan. Okay, so we have time for all of you. So this is our moment tonight. Thank you. Hello, guys. Let's have fun. All right. Missing participants, so let's make the best out of it. Um, I'm Dr. David Dorscar. I'm with Dorscar Capital Group. Um, we do uh, all business and investment real estate type loans. Um, we know that the lending market has been impacted by COVID-19, um, but we are fortunate because I had maybe about 100 lenders within my network. Um, I'm now reduced about 30. But we're, we're still getting things done. We recently got a, a, a loan a letter of intent for a $100 million project uh, in California. Um, so we are still lending and still helping uh, businesses as well as investors. Um, I've also written a book, uh, Seven Things to Know About Getting Money for Your Business. Um, so we know that not everyone qualifies for funding, but we'd like to help you if you don't qualify and learn how to. Um, we do SBA loans, we do uh, factoring, we do purchase order financing, we do battery 100%. Michael loans to make of 100 million, we can do it. Thank you. And please check the book out. Other things to know about getting money for your business. It's on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Nobles everywhere. Thank you, Dr. Dariska. Now, Madam Chair, Ms. Paola Pierre has something to announce. I have the honor and pleasure to introduce our guest, who was the chair of the board in 2005. And it is so great to see, to see him tonight. Although he has some gray hair, but it's okay, Raul. And Philip Alma is, where, is here as well. So it's a great team tonight. Welcome, guys. Raul? Sorry, I'm happy to be here. And that was a surprise. I didn't expect that. Um, 
I was actually checking Philip Armand's birthday because I know it's in May. It's coming soon. So I wanted to wish him a happy birthday during this happy hour. I don't know if you'll, you'll see me on May 25th. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, there you go. I knew it was coming soon. <laughs> so I wanted to wish you But I'm not very good with technology and I, I cannot see you guys, but. But I, we, we see you and you see the the ocean so, breeze from where you are. So that's good. <laughs> well, as Paula said, I was with the chamber. I mean, Philip, me, yeah. a, a bunch of us, yeah. Paola, have been here, have been around for a long time. Um, I left pretty much several years ago. You know, I'm kind of working out of state now, so I can't really participate the way I wanted to. Um, yeah. But I do believe I wanted to be here when I saw the invitation. I said I had to be here. This is such a great organization that has survived, you know, good and bad. And this COVID stuff is not going to stop them. You know, hackers are not going to stop them. You know, I think Paula is a great leader and she does incredible things. And I think you guys can do whatever you want. So I'm here to support, to cheer on. Um, the only thing I can say about COVID, which I think a lot of people forget, I mean, this is a very difficult time for a lot of people. People are losing their jobs, businesses slower, something like that. But as business people and people were, which we're doing, that's what we're trying to do now, is find where there's opportunities. You know, there may be opportunities for people out there, you know, to support other people, to make money, you know, which is what everybody wants to do. You just need to find ways to how to survive in this, in this thing. And we're going to get through it. I'm sure we're going to get through it. It may be a month, maybe two months, maybe six months, but we will do it, you know, and I think that we just need to make sure that we drag as many people along with us and we do well. So... A pleasure to, it's a pleasure to be here, happy with the gray, you know, but good to be here. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Paula? Yes, sir. Paula? Listen. I wanted to Don't say hello to Raul, who I've been seeing for so long. And uh, when I see Raul, it brings me back 20 years back, and it's so exciting to see him. I noticed that, uh, Raul, by the way, are you copying me with your beard and uh, mustache? Yeah, I'm trying to be like you. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I missed the beginning of the conversation, but where are you now? I'm in Miami now. I'm in Miami now. Oh, I just, but I've been, I just I've been working in Louisiana, but I've been in Miami for the past two months. Wonderful. Quarantining Wonderful. like everybody else. But I would like to pay tribute to you because uh, when ACOF started, we needed people like you to volunteer for the leadership of that organization. And uh, if I recall properly, you were our first president. And I think you did a good job. And this is a good time to reminisce. And thank you so much for doing it. Thank you. I, my arm was twisted a little bit. I think you had one part of it. <laughs> By the way, I, I know this place is not to do any politics, but uh, I gather that you're still a Republican, right? Well. <laughs> because yeah. I, 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 your, your, your positiveness and the way you went about the COVID-19 uh, getting us out of of the mess in which you're in. I thought it was a Republican statement. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's eternal. <laughs> it's, it's an inspirational, it's an inspirational message, but I think we, we need to think that way. Otherwise sitting at home, it's, it's difficult for everybody, but no, Absolutely. I'm an independent. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. No one really couldn't hear me. Thank you guys for sharing your stories. Now we're going to move on to Chef Stefan. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, um, it's certainly a pleasure uh, to be among all of you. Um, my story with Hakov started uh, in 2012, if I believe, um, when uh, we first launched Taste of Haiti in North Miami. So uh, my name is Chef Stefan. I'm a, uh, an executive chef in culinary. Um, I Called Culinary by Design, and I'm also the chairman and president of the Haitian Culinary Alliance, the first professional association um, for, ha for Haitians in the, in the in the hospitality and culinary world. So, um, 
you know, with COVID-19 hitting us so hard this year, we we obviously were, are going to be unable to do Taste of Haiti, which should have been this this past Saturday. So um, we came up with an idea um, to do Taste of Haiti on a plate for first responders, for people in the front line. And we're going to do that on the 29th. So, of course, my first uh, call was to my uh, favorite partners of Taste of Haiti, and that's Hakov. And as, as, as usual, always answered with a positive note. So I'm really happy that we're going to be partnering with uh, the city of North Miami to um, distribute about 200 plates on Friday the 29th. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead, Madam Chair. Yeah. Jeff, thank you. It was great to reconnect with you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure, Paula. You've been uh, one of my best best friends and supporters since we started this movement in 2012. Um, we continue to do a little bit of work that we can, both with where we are in the United States, but also um, with our work in Haiti. Um, supporting culinary education um, through the various schools that are in Haiti. Um, so um, we're, we're going to keep working until, as long as we have a, a breath, a breath to, to 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 go to go with. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. We're looking forward to seeing you. I'm looking forward to tasting your delicious cuisine. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Okay. Now we're moving to Mr. Apali. Where are you? Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, great to be here. Uh, I think this was a great idea. And uh, good to see, I don't know all of you. I know some of you. Um, Paula, Lumana, Jeff, uh, Raul, you know, good to see you all. Hervé, I haven't... Uh, haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Um, you know, good to see all of you. Um, I'm, uh, as some of you know, I'm more of a recent member to uh, Hack Off, but um, uh, I think I've been with you guys in, in spirit uh, for a much longer time. And um, I don't know, it's, uh, I don't really have uh, all that much to, to say. Other than you know, I'm a. Raúl knows that I'm a. I'm a deep blue Democrat, uh, but I want to say that I agree with everything uh, Raúl said, and frankly, I usually agree with whatever Raúl says in general. So, you know, go figure. But um, uh, you know, it's good to see everybody, and. Um, you know, on the other side of this, uh, I, I'd like to be able to meet with all of you one-on-one uh, -on -one over lunch or over pretty much anything you'd like. It, it'll be very great to make contact again. So thank you. Thank you, Anthony. It was nice seeing you. Okay, Madam Chair. Hi, Lara. If it's possible to say a few words, you are the most, one of the most recent members of the chamber and then we'd like to hear from you. Don't know much about you. It's good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to actually see you in person. We've been communicating by email. Yes. Um, my name is Lara Dabdub. I'm, I work at law firm of Frieden Brown. We're a personal injury firm. We do things like catastrophic injuries, medical malpractice, nursing home, things like that. I grew up in Jamaica. Both my parents have um, connections to Haiti. My mom lived there for years. So I was like, very excited to join because one thing is I want to get back into the Haitian community. I want to also get my Creole back since my grandmother passed away several years ago. I haven't practiced. So I understand, but speaking is difficult. <laughs> so I'm happy to be in this community setting where you know, I can connect with part of my my roots. Um, 
Thank you, Lara. Great to see you and then looking forward to spending more time with you and then partnering with you, getting to know more of what you do. And Daniela is here. It's so great to see you. Are you going to give us some update, Daniela? Daniela Lorraine is at the She's our commissioner for Miami-Dade County District 8. And then maybe she can give us an update. I heard the mayor is intended to get us back, open the businesses on the May 18. Do you have anything to say about that, Daniela? And then let us know what's going on with the county. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paula. So, so nice to see many friends already on this Zoom call and hope that those I don't already know will feel free to reach out. I would love to speak to all of you. I'm the County Commissioner for District 8, but once upon a time, I worked with pa Paula when she was, you know, just uh, ascending the ladder. So she did the, the she was um, at Catalyst Miami with me back in the day, it was Human Services Coalition. And uh, I was really proud uh, that uh, Paula and also Rasha Kamo were part of our team. So thank you so much, Paula, for including me today. So uh, yes, I have a lot to say <laughs> about the situation. First of all, uh, I have been calling uh, for aggressive action from the beginning. Let's start with the national level where we blew it. We waited too long, uh, didn't take the advice that we were getting from the World Health Organization, um, didn't take advantage of access to tests, and one thing after another really delayed till it was really disastrously late. Uh, and now we're catching up. Uh, the good news in Florida is that we haven't had as steep a rise of the disease as in some other places. I read a really interesting article yesterday uh, that it was because of the people of Florida. So by the time that the disease was being discussed, the people were voting with their feet and they were already staying home in advance of the governor or the mayor calling for uh, those actions. So thanks to all of us who took precautions, we were able to avoid a steeper rise. That having been said, we have not contained this virus at all. Uh, the, the hospitalization rate is somewhat stable, maybe a little bit down, but you know, some days it still goes up. So, you know, we're not at that two weeks of decline that we're supposed to see before opening up. So with that said, I'm very nervous. I know we all want to get back to work. I know we all want to make sure that uh, we can pay the bills. I know that we are uh, sick and tired of being at home. Uh, and of course, people who are more vulnerable need to take more precautions, right? The older people like myself, uh, the sicker people, uh, you know, we know that we're more at risk and we have to take more risk, uh, more uh, protective action, but everybody has to take actions to protect all of us. We're all in this together. So, you know, the masking and the separation, uh, and, and it's a little bit of a slippery slope. So even though restaurants, you know, can open with six feet between people and, you know, all of this, uh, even though you could have some gatherings now or go to some offices, we need to be really, really vigilant. And I personally am particularly worried about the air circulation because it's demonstrated that places where there's not fresh air flowing through, those uh, viral particles you know, are circulating in the air. So even if you go to the grocery store, you might not be there very long, but the person who's working in the store is there a long time exposing him or herself. So, you know, these are the things we need to really think a lot about how to get the fresh air circulation, prevent the viral flow, how to protect, you know, not to allow our own uh, uh, germs to go out because we could be asymptomatic carriers, right? We all know that because we did a... A, a population study, a random study that was conducted by the county and the University of Miami. And it's estimated now that about 6% of the population has been infected. And half of those people that turned out to either be actively caring or who had and have antibodies, half of them were not aware of symptoms. So just if you can extrapolate that to the whole population, half of us, you know, might be some of us here might be asymptomatic and might be carrying. And that's why we have to be very, very protective. So, you know, the first round of opening is uh, some, some of the businesses, the restaurants, but still no hotels, no bars, uh, not the beaches, no, no spas, no gyms. 
things where there's a lot of uh, potential for contact with surfaces without being able to clean in between touch and uh, also close quarters that it's too hard to control. So, you know, we need to be very vigilant as we do this. Fortunately, we're going to be adding um, more tracers. So we're going to have, so if people get sick, the most important thing to do is if someone is tested positive, that we need to find everybody they've been in contact with and aggressively pursue those people, test them and isolate them if they are uh, carrying the virus. So there's a lot of public health response that's not really built into the plan that the mayor has rolled out. So I'm very nervous about it, to be very frank, and I have provided my critique of it. The most important thing is for each of us to protect ourselves and, and each other. That to be said, we know that the economy is in a tailspin. So what we do to keep businesses afloat right now is all important. We have the federal program, the Paycheck Protection Program. I don't know how many of you have applied. Maybe you could you know, say, yes, I applied. How many of you were successful? Uh, not enough, uh, more coming, but not enough. I am sponsoring legislation Tuesday at the County Commission to create a county program that will supplement. So if you've not been eligible or not been successful, hopefully starting very soon, we'll have a county program. The city of Miami also had a program. I know through the CRA in uh, North Miami, there is also a program. I'm sure you, um, you're you aware of that program. Uh, and uh, But we have to find all those resources and we have to repurpose them because it's all about stimulating the economy and not letting these businesses die. Uh, that having been said, we know many have already closed uh, and many are being are reinventing themselves. So, uh, you know, what used to be a restaurant is now a takeout. What used to um, uh, be a dance uh, program is now a virtual dance program, et cetera. So, you know, every, even though there's a business to repurpose the furniture and the equipment, in restaurants that are closing. I mean, just every possible innovation, and we need to find funds for those innovations as well. So I'm gonna to continue to champion that. I, I wanna hear from uh, business people like yourselves, what you're experiencing, what you think would make a difference. Uh, and in the meantime, we also have people who are just living on the edge. They are lining up in their cars all hours at night to get some food, um, they're desperately trying to get through the unemployment application system, which is a, a nightmare. Uh, applying for food benefits, which are very, very important lifeline too. And we obviously have to keep up and not able to pay the rent. So we have um, an eviction moratorium, but we don't have a rent moratorium. And if you're owning property, you need to pay your bills too. If you have a federally backed loan, the federal government is giving a three month uh, extension, and hopefully that can work to those renters also who can't afford uh, to pay, maybe to pass on some of that to the renters. And But really, it's a, an eviction moratorium, but not a rent moratorium. The rent will be due, and that's both for uh, residential and, and commercial. So many, many more things that need to be done, but those are a few of the, the top headlines. And of course, if anyone has any suggestions or questions, I'd love to hear. So thank you again, Paula. Thank you, Daniela. Okay, next we're gonna move on to Mac. Oh, I mean, I left earlier after the disruption. I don't know exactly what's the what's, what's the agenda for now. Okay, Mac, you're just gonna present yourself and tell us a little bit about you or your business. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mac, and um, currently I'm working at the City of North Miami. I'm working at the Finance Department, and as well, um, I'm currently working on finishing my MBA as a five. And uh, I'm the Vice President of Public Relations for the Toastmasters International District here in Miami. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Toastmasters. And um, on the other side, I have my own business, which is a software as a service company where we provide multiple platform to real estate companies so that they can um, create more um, revenue for the business where they can connect with municipalities and requesting lien searches and uh, all anything that is related to transaction with the municipalities. 
I'm very delighted to join you guys, you know, tonight. And then I just simply look forward to learn and connect with all of you. Anything from the media? Thank you, Mac. Okay, Rose, are you there from the media? Princeton, are you back? No, I'm not. Oh, Rose is there. No, no, I am there, and then I'm just, I'm just assisting because with the Zoom now you have the opportunity. Even if you're at the office, you're doing other work, you have the opportunity to assist and see what's going on in the community very often. I'm glad that you guys decided to go down that way. And then I'm going to keep on uh, watching and see what's going on. A lot of good information is going through so far. So I'm going to keep on watching so I can inform my, my listeners uh, more or less what's going on. And then you guys know you can always contact me, Paola, Jeff, any one of you can contact me at the radio if uh, you guys want to any information that you want me to pass to. Thank you, Rose. Thank you so much. It's great to hear from you. Thank you. Mr. Princeton? Yes, Madam VP, how are you? And hi, you. everyone. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for the commitment to Jen Akaf tonight. And I'm in the healthcare industry. I know everyone asking about what uh, how the business is doing. Um, for me, I can't complain. Um, at least I'm in line with two different kind of business, home health and and clinic. I'll say the home health side is better than the clinic because the clinic, we, uh, I would say we're not equipped to see the patient that we want to see at the time that we want to see it. So technically we have to limit the amount of patient that we have to see. Um, I would say it's okay for us. Um, the only thing I can share tonight is that if you think you are too small to make a difference, try, I guess I would say try sleeping with a mask. I find it very hard, especially in our communities, that uh, so many people I see with the business and trying to help them with the help I was able to get myself, but none of them uh, technically have no taxes. So this is one thing that I think the chamber need to take lead on, at least to create a culture where we can operate and we can make it better for all the businesses. I know there's a lot of anxiety out there. Um, and for me, I would say you guys are not alone. Everybody have the anxiety. But for me, we have to go beyond the crisis. And I think we are in this together. And I, I know we have many businesses in the chamber and all of us together try to make commitment to work hard to see what we can see to, uh, so we can see the finest moment in this hour. And if you are online and you're not part of the chamber, I will encourage you to join the chamber. Uh, and lastly, I would say to take yourself and your family. And I would say, remember to pray. God is always in control. Thank you. Thank you, Princeton. And guys, we look forward to living, to hearing so much more from Princeton. He has a story to share and we can't wait to hear it. Mr. Omar, you have a new business in town. We'd like to hear more about it. Philip? Okay, Philip is not a good one. Claude, are you there? Yes. Um, yes, I'm there. Okay. Can you share your stories with the group, please? Uh, okay. That's a long story, but I will make it short. Make it short, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because uh, I've, um, I have just registered uh, with ACOF a new business, which is HGS. But I've been a member of ACOF since years. 
Thank you. And um, AGS is uh, a technology in technology, and we do um, what we call uh, the GIS, the Geographical Information System. And uh, we are working for the private sector, most most for the private sector, and doing the what we call the business mapping. And um, what I would like to do, if I can have some time, I can share with you uh, one uh, one map that has been developed by HGS to follow the the COVID nineteen in Haiti. So. If you if you give me a few, let's say two or three more minutes, I can share with you my screen and show to you what what we are doing. You are you will have a better understanding of what we do. Uh, two more minutes. That's yeah. all I can give you. Let's 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 go fast. Okay, let's go fast. Uh, let's go fast. Oh, the host disabled attendee screen sharing. So you have to activate. Oh no, because of what happened earlier, we have to. Ah, okay. So okay, so, so sorry. To share. So, sorry. So you are not going to share. Okay, no, yeah. no problem. But I think I think that um, I think that uh, I have a PDF on the on the on the hack of website. So someone, anyone who is interested, can go and look at it and they will see they have a better understanding of what we are doing. Um, because it's, it's a wide range of activities uh, going from agriculture to um, construction, um, construction mapping, agriculture mapping, business mapping. So everything that is related to uh, the, the geographical information system we do. So, Let's 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 say it like this. Okay, thank you for sharing. We appreciate the work that you do. Now we're gonna move on to Philip. Could I just say, uh, Paula, that I'm going to drop off, but I, I was really delighted to join you and I put my contact information in the chat and welcome hearing from everybody. Thank you. Thank so you, much. Daniela. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. See you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I do apologize. I, I was on mute and I didn't realize that as what I was saying earlier. But anyway, I just really confess that I'm very excited about this first read and meet meeting. And I'm absolutely impressed by it. And uh, this really shows us that when we sit down to do things as Haitians and Haitian Americans, uh, we are able to, to be very productive. And um, I do encourage the, the board of directors to continue that effort because it's about time for Haitian American to be really the, a leading force in this community. Um, there's, there's nothing that the Cubans have that us Haitians do not have. And uh, we have, uh, although we're less in number, but we, there's a, they have showed the way how it can impose itself. And uh, thank you. I think we have some professionals uh, among us. And, um, today, uh, really uh, watching uh, what all is being said and what all is being, I think the hopes are very, very high. Uh, of course, we have all been uh, very sure um, but I, I think that the, after COVID-19, it should be a great opportunity for us to stand out in the community. Um, I would like um, to pay tribute to, to Gerda and to Dr. Coupet and everybody who have gone with a Pan-American Coalition Task Force that is going to is really trying to really help the community at all the fantastic events. Anyway, thank you very much for inviting me to take part in this meeting. It's great. Uh, I shall be going back to Haiti in June uh, as, as soon as the American Airlines flies us back. 
but I do want to really stay very, very active. And I do hope that the board of ACOF will invite me to take place in those meeting weeks that you'll be having in the future. Even from Haiti, I'll be very happy to participate and who knows, to get some of the Hamsham members uh, to get involved. Uh, I know that we have a, uh, members of Amsham who are here. Uh, I saw a few in the meeting tonight. And of course, um, broadening our community communications um, would be a, a great thing. Uh, when, when I said I saw some of our, I saw Henri Claude in particular, who I did not know was in Florida. But uh, Henri Claude, um, you really can be a very good bridge uh, between the Haitian American community and the Haitian business community. And this is the future uh, for us, and let's all work uh, towards it. So, Paola, thank you for inviting me, and um, all of you guys. And I did not see Jeff, but as Jeff is un potobitan, I wish I had seen Jeff, and uh, uh, I do rely very much on the efforts that Jeff has displayed as president of ACOF over the last four, four or five years or six years. And um, I think uh, this is really great. And I know you guys know I'm there to support in any way, shape, or form that I can. So thank you again and enjoy it all. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry that Daniela got off the phone, but uh, of the communication. It, it, it's so great to see that. Uh, Daniela is keeping uh, such a good contact with us and um, work with her and towards making it greater for the Haitian American community in Florida. Thank you again to you all. Take care. Thank you, Philip. Now we're going to move on to Lawrence Gonzalez. Um, I just wanted to say bye to everyone. I have to go, but it was great meeting everybody and I look forward to seeing everybody again. It was great meeting you. We look forward to Thank seeing you. you. Thank you, Laura, for coming. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Bye. Okay, Mr. Gonzalez, you have the floor. Jeff, I request that you say a few words. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't even know I was going to say a few words, but hi, everybody. Thank you for having me here. My name is Lawrence Gonzalez. I am. I was born in Miami, but raised in Haiti, Delma, so I'm not a Pollo, even though my last name is Gonzalez. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Brazilian, so, you know, hey, it is what it is. I actually work and live in DC now. I work for the US Treasury as an auditor and we're part of a lot of the different, you know, goings on as far as international financial assistance. I don't audit you, I audit actual treasury. So don't worry about me. Uh, another thing that I do and I did, and I thank Jeff for even sharing this link because that's kind of, I just scroll through online and see what's going on and sorry for being late, but I worked with uh, extensively with Wanda um, Tima uh, Gil, who has actually produced uh, the Haitian American as well as Lunio Street. So we push out a lot of good information out there. Mm -hmm. One of the leading um, information sources for a lot of younger Haitian Americans. And we try to reach out as much as possible. On my end, personally, I love to do financial literacy education. So I do consulting for free. I do, I read, I used to read a lot of resumes until I got too drunk on wine. It's, it's pretty bad. The resumes are bad. <laughs> so I do help people try to shift their financial understanding. And, you know, I'm actually happy to be here because there's one thing that uh, with CARES Act going on, and even the HEROES Act proposal that's being pushed, there's something actually dropped in December mm -hmm. called the Act, which is big for small business owners. Who never even had the 401k access or employee, you know, employee benefit access. I think that's something uh, your organization should probably look into and really dig into that because that's going to be big to help a lot of small Haitian mom and pops in America pull together and get on the the investment and personal employee benefit stuff. That's where a lot of wealth is being lost and not being generated. That's where a lot of people they got the businesses but they don't have the documents, the paperwork. They're not scaling up. There's a lot of um, retirement, people are not retiring in anything. So we might think everybody's okay, but in truth, when you roll it back and start asking people, they're deep in debt, they have their mortgage, they're pushing 50, 60. So we're trying to push away from that. So I'm not gonna take anybody else more time on that. I just kind of want to really center everybody to say that we do need to work together as an entire community to solve a myriad of issues from young to old to wherever, we're all in this together. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Now I'm going to talk about our next upcoming event, the Breakfast and Learn with Harkoff. Marilyn, I know you wanted to say a few words regarding the breakfast on the 29th. Uh, sure. I'm not sure if you, some of you have heard it before, but I wanted to take a quick minute and introduce myself because this is the first time that I'm attending a membership meeting. So I'm Marilyn Rousseau. My background is primarily in information technology. I have about 30 years of experience uh, working as a software engineer, particularly in areas of database administration and management. Uh, however, my passion is not IT. My passion is really coaching, training, and mentoring, uh, particularly business people as well as individuals who want to get past setbacks in their life and reach their full potential. So about six years ago, I uh, became a life coach. Uh, my, my really specialty is working with individuals and helping them uh, sort of really shift their mindset in a positive growth way so that they can really reach their full potential. Uh, and, and actually, those of you who heard me speak earlier, I'm going to be doing a class specifically for the chamber, and it's going to be to address this current pandemic, you know, the emotions that all of us are going through right now, particularly as it relates to our personal lives or jobs, uh, you know, it's been a tough time. And some people are navigating it well and others are not. And, um, you know, with my work and with a lot of the lessons that I've learned in my personal life, I've developed a signature system, which is really based around certain principles that if you learn them and you put them into practice, you will develop resiliency and you'll have the ability to really navigate these tough times. Because we're going through this pandemic right now, but I bet every single one of you have had tough times in your life at some point in the past. Let's just say if you're over 40, most likely you've experienced tough times, right? But you've overcome them because you're here. Uh, so there's a lot to be said about that. And I'm, I'm really excited about helping other people really find ways to move forward and not just move forward, but move forward in a way that you become stronger, stronger for having gone through this pandemic, but also stronger to strengthen your business to reinvent your business. There are so many opportunities right now. You know, that's, I wanna invite people to not just, you know, it's okay, yes, we have to be aware of what's going on, but we can also start shifting the focus on the opportunities, on the possibilities. They're out there, guys. And if you're not looking at them, somebody else is. So we'll be talking about that. So uh, on the side, another thing about me, I'm also a philanthropist. I do have a nonprofit called Right to Learn Global Literacy Project. And this was founded about three years ago uh, as a result of finding my passion. Uh, I'm really, really uh, passionate about not just helping people, but really helping particularly underprivileged patients um, acquire the skills that they need in terms of education and literacy so that they can get out of poverty. Um, and so that, that, you know, this particular nonprofit does a lot of work here. I, I, most of my work is around the Broward County area, just because that's where I live. Uh, but, you know, I've got adult literacy programs and a number of other programs that help um, get people out of poverty through education. So, uh, I'm really excited and I look forward to, to coming to these meetings a lot more and getting to know all of you. And somebody mentioned earlier, you know, I think it's important for us to just, you know, support each other and, and really come together in a way that is going to create the strength that we need to make a difference. So I'm happy to meet all of you and happy to, you know, if there's any way I can support you, please let me know. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to share? 
Okay, so I'm gonna ask everyone to join us for the next event, the breakfast. Paola, yes. If with your permission, uh, I, I must tell you, uh, uh, I'm most enthused and uh, listening to Marilyn just talk. Uh, I'm even more enthused that for about what I was saying before. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Marilyn, uh, I'm gonna try to contact you on a personal level afterwards. If you don't mind, I will ask Paula for your coordinates. But I, unfortunately, uh, would you believe I had taken an appointment, another Zoom meeting at eight o'clock. I have to step up, but it's. Uh, I was only asking, were you able to record this meeting or, or not? Video is being recorded on Facebook. Paula, is it yes, it's been recorded on Facebook Live and YouTube. Beautiful. I, I, beautiful. I'm sure that a lot of people who were not fortunate enough to participate in the discussion today uh, will very much enjoy listening to it after. And even myself, I would like to listen to some part of it that I missed. So I would like to thank everybody for their support to this greet and meet. My first greet and meet in my life, by the way, I was not accustomed to do that. It was quite an experience. I'll be more disciplined next time. And I know Luman, I was like, what, what's, what is going on? I didn't realize at the beginning of the way it was supposed to be structured. So I apologize. <laughs> Okay. No problem. Thank you, Philip. We were happy anyway, to have you on board. You all have a pleasant evening. Continue. It's a great thing, and I'll listen to the recording. Thank you, <laughs> Philip. Bye-bye. You too. Bye -bye. Take care. So, my advice, Chair. Yes, Marilyn, we have the Breakfast and Learn coming up. Yes. Tonight yes. from 8.30 to 9.30 via Zoom. So we will send the invite out to everyone. Definitely. And I hope to see all of you. It's going to be a great session. It's going to be empowering, inspiring, and motivating. So please come on. <laughs> thank you. All right. See you guys. I got to jump out. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yes. Yes. Uh, can I do a plug for Ivan, Chef of Ivan, course. Ivan Cookhouse? He had difficulty um, getting on. Uh, he is a virtual sponsor for the night. Um, Chef Ivan wants everyone to know that his restaurant is still open for takeout only. Uh, you can visit him at 14815 Biscayne Boulevard. And uh, let me give his number. Uh, Chef Ivan's number is 786-487-3748. Is, uh, 786-487-3746. So he's one of our virtual sponsors for the night. Unfortunately, he was not able to get on uh, to just tell us about his menu and what he's got cooking, uh, but he is a great supporter of Hack Off and we um, uh, would like for everyone, to, if you want to order something, to go to Chef Ivan. Thank you, Jeff. We miss the chef, but we look forward to seeing him another time. Is there anyone else? Because it's about, it's 8.01 and we have to end the meeting tonight. So a final toast before Madam Chair give the final closing. Yes. I toast to all of you. I thank you all for joining us and I thank you for the hard work that you do for the chamber. Madam Chairwoman, can you give us the final announcement or closing, closing statement? Hi. It was sad because we had a great momentum happening, but it's good to, you know, we got back and then we continued this conversation and then uh, then made it great. Um, I know COVID happened, um, the pandemic, we all are going through it. We all are going through some stuff, personal, professionally, and, uh, but we'll get through it one day. And I, I encourage all my members, my friends, just remember millionaires are born on days like this. Remember that. And this is the time we have to be creative. We have to be open to new opportunities and then see, be flexible and then to see how we can, you know, move to the next step. Um, we are, in our, the Haitian community, we have a few businesses, a lot of businesses, mom and pop, small businesses. They went through so much, they're going through so much right now. And then some of them might not come back 
um, as a result of this because of financial impact they're going through. But just remember, the ones that will sustain, the one that will stay, they have a lot to learn. They will learn a big lesson to be better next time. We need to fix our financial, we need to be, fix our books. There are things that, you know, we have to go by and then to, to make sure that we have them in place. Um, Not Miami has been a great supporter. Not Miami has been great to us, to, cham to the chamber, because the reason that like, we are here, I would say that because of a support with them, with um, also uh, the Miami Dade County, the commissioner. I'm sorry to mention so many elected officials, but they have been commissioner when they said they really have been good to, good to us, the mayor in North Miami. But I, um, I'll leave you with this. Please stay connected, stay with us, be with us, believe in us, support us, and then so we can continue to do what we're doing. It's not for any reason that we're still standing after 15 years. We are here to stay, we are here to improve, and then if you're not part of the problem, please be part of the solution. Again, my name is Paola Pierre. I am here, you guys have my phone number, you have my email, and then please contact me and then I'll be in touch with you. I can have a Zoom meeting with you, I can have a phone call with you and text with you. I believe we have some members that are here. I see Miami, Le Miami, Al Miami, Mary Alex, Stanley. Hi, it's good to see you. And then I thank you and good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, everyone. Thank the board. Thank you, the oh, members. Okay. Until next time, Until next time the meeting has concluded. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.